Oh, hey, Louis here. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jetbot, the little jet that likes to push it to the extreme and a little bit further. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can create this quick jet shader effect. Handy for, well, anything with jets, really. And because it's all shader based, we don't need to create or bake any particles. Now, it does assume that you already have some shader node knowledge, but we will be going step by step. So you can follow along by downloading the start and final blend file made in Blender 4.1.1 from the resources section of cgboost.com. And if you have load UI checked, it should come in looking very similar to this. Also, stick around to the end as we'll automate the power of our jet with a handy slider. Also, this video is brought to you by P2 Design and their new The Art of Effective Rigging 2 course. Learn to rig simple, cute or full-blown hero characters in Blender. More on that later. Okay, I'm starting here with an existing robot design aptly named Jetbot. And we also have some geometry for our jet shader effect, namely this plume at the bottom here, which if we go into isolation mode and switch on our wireframes, you can see that it is effectively a cylinder with the top and bottom cap removed, a couple of edge loops, and then a subdivision surface modifier to keep it nice and smooth. And then under that, we have our primary jet shader, which again is a cylinder with the cap removed on the bottom, inset a little bit on the top, and a crease also along the edge here, just so that it remains sharp when our subdivision surface modifier is added to that. Do. Okay, with that done, let's concentrate on our primary jet first and switch our viewport over from a 3D view to shader editor. And I'm just going to hit N on the keyboard as well to hide that side panel. And as you can see, we do not have a material on this yet. So let's just click new and call our material jet. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a gradient fall off. So we have a high intensity jet here and it fades off into nothing. So let's do shift A and search for gradient texture. Now, before we continue, it's worth noting that this whole operation becomes a whole lot easier with Node Wrangler enabled. So if you're not sure if you have that, we can go up to edit preferences and under add-ons search for Node Wrangler and just make sure that that tick box is checked. With that done, we can select our gradient texture, hit Control Shift and left click and see the effect here. And you can see we have a gradient, but it is running along the Y axis. This isn't really what we want. So we can use another Node Wrangler feature with Control T hooking up texture coordinates. And now about the rotation, we want to rotate along our Y axis here and we want to rotate 90 degrees. And now we have the fall off that we want. We only need the factor output here, which looks pretty much the same anyway. And we can plug that into our alpha and then control shift click our principal BSDF. And you can see, well, nothing. It doesn't look like anything's changed. However, if we move down, we can see that within our settings here, we need to change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Looking better. And although it won't matter hugely, we don't really want to have our geometry cast a shadow because it's sort of an emissive plasma, which I don't really think would cast a shadow. I'm going to say no. Uh, so let's just switch that to none. OK, I'm just going to switch off our overlays here so we can see things a little bit better. And as we stated before, it is an emissive plasma, so we don't want any base color here. So we can drop that to nothing. And under our specular, the IOR level again to nothing. And then all the way at the bottom here, if we expand our emission, we do want that. So let's crank that up to one. OK, now we can use that gradient along with a color ramp to dial in the fall off a little bit better. So I'm just going to control click to add an extra point in here and just turn it down a bit. Something like that looks good. And we can duplicate that with Shift and D and again run our factor out into it. And this time we can start assigning colors. So let's plug our color into our emission color input here. And I think we want to start at quite a dark blue. Go to a hotter cyan kind of color, something like that. And then finish off 
white, super hot. Okay, let's just increase our emission so we can see that effect even more. Looks good. Now, I don't know about you, but the hard edges here are a little bit of a giveaway and doesn't feel quite as organic, or at least it doesn't feel strong and powerful in the center, tapering off towards the edge. But we can fix that by introducing a layer weight node. And if we control shift click through, we have our Fresnel here, but we also have our facing. And this gives us a value that is darker for the polygons immediately facing us and increases in value as we get to the edge here and the polygons are at more of a glancing angle. We can use this to our advantage with some math nodes. So giving ourselves a little bit of room here, we can hit shift and right click and drag down to create a join. So we have one string here to introduce a new node, namely the math node set to multiply. Let's introduce that and then plug in our facing output of our layer weight. And let's just control shift left click that. Okay, that's doing the opposite of what we want. So let's introduce an invert color. Cool. Now you'll see here we have a little bit of a line here which can easily be fixed by moving over to our material options and just unchecking show back face. Now if we go through and control shift click our principal BSDF, we have this really nice effect and we can tweak things a little more. Now this is looking pretty good, but as you can see when we're playing through here, it's pretty static. There's no turbulence or texture in it at all. So let's look at how we can fix that. And to do so, we can introduce a texture. Let's go with a Voronoi texture. And if we again control shift left click, we can see what that looks like. And I want to mix that texture with our gradient here. So let's search for mix, plug it in after our gradient texture, introduce our distance in like so and we can look through our principal BSDF again, and you can see the kind of texture we have here, and we can balance things a little bit. So I'm gonna go with something like that, looks good. And if we go back to our color ramps here, as you can see, we can start seeing the bottom, we don't want that, so let's just move our values around ever so slightly to make sure the effect stays good. And I'm just going to tweak the Voronoi texture here, giving it a little more detail, maybe playing with the scale a little bit, and then just going back to our color ramp here and just making sure that we have a nice fall off that doesn't include that hard edge at the bottom. Okay, I'm done tweaking here and this is my result. I'm kind of happy with the texture, but if we hit play here, you can see that it's not particularly realistic, it's quite static. So if we jump back to frame one here, we can introduce some automated animation over time, and we can reference the frame number as our increasing value to do so. So in our shader node editor, let's just hit Shift and A and search for value. And if we click in and type hashtag frame, you can see that it now follows our frame number and we can use that number to offset the texture, but we only want to do it in one axis, so we have all of the mass being ejected from the top to the bottom. So in order to do that, firstly, we need to hook up some coordinates to our Voronoi texture, again with Control and T, and we want to affect the location, but only in one axis, so we can select, drag out, and search for Combine XYZ Vector, and the vector we want is the Z axis. So let's plug that in and hit play and see what happens. Okay, looking pretty good, but feels like it's happening too fast. So we can right click to edit our driver. And then under the expression option here, we can divide by, let's say 10. That feels a little bit nicer. Excellent. And while we're here, I might just tweak some of these scale values as well, just to create a non-uniform sort of scaling to our Voronoi texture. Okay, we have a nice effect here. Um, I'm just going to switch back to our color ramps and change them from linear to ease. It feels like the fall off happens a little bit nicer. 
And while we're in here, we can do a little bit of clean up. So I'm just hitting control and space and then shift A, layout frame. We want a couple of these. So let's just duplicate them like so. And our first one is F2 linear fall off. And we can just hit G and move that over here and grab these set of nodes. And then we have F2 math. This can just simply hold these two. And then one can be texture like so. And this can be F2 side fall off. Cool. That's a little bit more organized. Okay, that's looking really good, but stick around because we are going to look at creating the particle effect with the other piece of geometry, as well as hooking things up to this handy slider here on the right. Hello, today I have some exciting news to share with you. Our friend Peric from P2 Design has a course that covers pretty much everything you need to know about rigging your 3D characters for production in Blender, and it's called The Art of Effective Rigging 2. It has 33 hours of lessons, full PDF documentation, including lesson highlights, keyboard shortcuts, and rig hierarchy overviews. As well, recently he has added a new section on exporting rigged characters to game engines like Unreal and Unity. The course comes with high quality 3D character models for you to learn with, optimized to run on pretty much any PC. One of the ways you know these rigs are top notch is by watching the frankly mind bending short film he has created with the characters from the course. Peric is an outstanding teacher, rigger, and animator, and I cannot recommend his work enough. This course has years of expert rigging knowledge packed into a comprehensive and fun package. You're not going to get this anywhere else for this price, so check out the link in the description. Okay, our jet shader is looking great. Let's unhide with Alt and H so we can see the other piece of geometry we have put together, and this is for the particle effect. So let's select that piece of geometry. I'm just going to switch on the overlays here so we can see what we're doing. And over in our material options, let's just click new and call it particles. Now we have already done quite a lot of the work in the previous shader setup. So let's go over to our 3D viewport, hit H, select our jet here. And over in the material options again, click this little drop down arrow, copy material, over to our 3D viewport, Alt H select our particle mesh, and again, the little drop down arrow and paste material. Now this has come across great, but what it hasn't done is it hasn't copied our driver across. So we need to re-enter that quickly, and we can do the calculation directly in the field, divided by, this time, I'm gonna go a higher value, 50. Now, in order to give ourselves a particle-like look, first of all, let's just increase our mix so it's more the Voronoid texture. Increase the scale of our Voronoid texture, like so. Now, we want to have these little circles as the opaque parts, so let's just invert the color here. You can see where we're going. And instead of our color ramp here at the end, which controls the fall-off of our alpha, we can alt left click, drag that out, introduce a math node, change it to greater than and introduce it like so. And this just has the effect of having a color ramp set to constant and the value here, the number here is equivalent to the number here. Just a handy, more compact node. Okay, now we're done with that. We can hit X to delete it. And again here, we don't need our color ramp. So let's just alt left click and X and we can drive the color with the color from our Voronoi, like so. And if you're anything like me, you want a little bit more saturation, we can introduce a hue saturation value and just crank up the saturation to two. Now I'm going to change the threshold of our greater than so our particles look a little bit smaller. Again, tweaking our mix here. And the fall off on the edges here isn't working for me, so we can use a gamma node to adjust our output here. So let's just search for gamma, introduce that, and tweak the values here so we can see the spread is much more out towards the edge, like so. And in fact, we can duplicate that gamma node, set it to one, and introduce it after our linear fall off so we can have a little bit more control with that as well. And the gamma here is effectively doing the same as a color ramp with a middle value being slid around like that. 
Okay, that's looking good, but you'll notice we have lost our underlying jet mesh. So to remedy that, we need to go back to our material options, go all the way down to settings and just make sure we show back face. And here we have both shaders. So now we can tweak a little bit more and I'm going to increase the emission just so we can really see the glow there. Cool. And there we have our particles emitted as well. Okay, we've created our shaders, but it would be nice to hook it up to this slider here. Now, as for the slider itself, it's quite a simple model, so I won't take us through modeling it. However, it's worth noting that if I just unhide it here, we have an armature uh, and a root bone and then the lever with a custom shape. So if we go into pose mode, you can see we have our lever here. And let's just hit N and toggle out the properties. And we want to focus on the Y location here because we're going to grab it and move it up along the Y. We can see that it exists around mm, value zero to mm, about 4.8. So we want to have those values in mind when we use them to create some variation in our shaders here. So I'm just going to jump back out and into our shader. Let's hide our particles here and start with the jet shader. Okay, now let's look at how we can use that Y location value of our bone in our shader. Firstly, we can right click the Y and select copy as new driver. I'm just hitting N to hide, go back out into object mode with control and tab, select our jet. And then in our nodes here, we need a new node. So let's just do shift and A search for value, then right click paste driver. And now this is our Y coordinate. Let's just keep it nice and organized by going into layout frame F2 and call it bone position. Okay, let's move our value in there so we know exactly what this is. And how can we use it? Well, we could use it to say tint the flame orange. Let's search for a mix color introduce it after our color ramp here. And then let's choose a very bright orange and we can blend it together with the color blend mode like so. So you can see the effect here. Now we can drive this factor with the value of our bone position. Now let's just go in and test it here. Okay, it's working, but it's doing the inverse of what I really want. We want it to be sort of orangey and then get super hot and blue as soon as we slide the lever up. And we can also see that it transitions uh, even before we even hit halfway here. So we need to remap the coordinates. Okay, let's jump back out into object mode, select our jet here and introduce a map range node. Now, if you remember, going back out into our bone here, as soon as we grab it all the way to the top, it gets to about 4.8 on the Y coordinate. So that is what we need to remap. So let's plug the value into our value input and the result out. And the maximum value isn't one. We want it to be that 4.8. And we want to map it again from 0 to 1. So let's just try that. Cool, it transitions evenly over the entire slider now, which is what we want. However, to invert it, we can just go back into our shader and just switch the min and max output values. So zero to one and one to zero. This is in effect inverting. Okay, let's see what else we can do with our newly created bone position setup here. So let's just copy and paste these nodes we created. So copy, I'm going to go over to the 3D viewport, unhide everything, select our little cylinder here with the particle shader, and then back on over to our shader editor, control and V to paste everything in. However, we've pasted the nodes, but we haven't pasted the driver here. So let's just jump back, copy driver, and paste it. Okay, now we can use it to drive the kind of quasi power of our particles here, which is with the greater than node. So you can see if we slide this up and down, uh, when we get to one, there's no particles. And when we get to zero, there's loads of particles. So let's just undo that and plug in our map range node like so. 
Okay, as you can see, we have no particles. Let's move our lever up. More, 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 and an obscene amount. Perhaps we need to turn that down. So let's just leave the lever at the top there. Go into object mode, select our cylinder object. And as we uh, tested earlier, as soon as we get down to zero, it becomes, well, too much. So we don't want it to be close to zero. We want it to sort of max out maybe around 0.6. That could be nice. Let's go with 0.7. Okay, now let's go in to our lever here, and you can see it only starts really kicking in right at the top. Excellent. Okay, this is starting to look pretty good, but I think we can do one more thing just to really sell home the power when you move the slider all the way to the top. That is scaling the eject mesh, and we can do so again with the position of our lever here. So I'm just going to scale out this workspace as we're not going to really need any shaders here. Hit N on the keyboard and with our lever selected we can again right click and copy as new driver on our Y location. Then jump out into object mode with control and tab. Select the armature of our jet bot. Select the jet bone within it in pose mode and then under the scale option here we can right click and paste driver. Now let's just see what that looks like by going into our lever bone. I mean, it's doing what we want, but it's um, a little bit extreme. When we're at the bottom, there's no flame at all. And when we're at the top, there's a, an obscene amount of flame. So we need to remap things. Uh, to do so, first of all, I'm going to hit the auto keyframe down here and then spacebar and then just move things up and down ever so slightly so we get an idea of what the range is like. Just hitting pause there, going in to our armature, selecting the jet bone, and under the scale here we can right click, edit driver, change it from averaged value to scripted expression. This just gives it the name location which refers to the Y position of our lever moving up and down. And now we can add some calculations after the fact. So to reduce the power, let's divide it by three. Yeah, that's working quite nicely, but again, we're losing it when the slider's right at the bottom. So let's add one. Cool, I think we can reduce the power a bit more by dividing it by a little bit more. Perfect, I'm really happy with that result. Okay, we are done. Now, you will no doubt notice that there is some additional animated or automated animation in this file. The star trails in the background and the face swapping. If that's of interest to you, maybe leave a comment down below. Otherwise, you can just go to cgboost.com and download the finished file as well and just sort of feel around yourself. Um, you can see that link down right next to the P2 Design Rigging Course link. 